Hello, this is Panzer Kiel 13. Recently, I got into a discussion on one of the Facebook pages. I believe it was uh, the 135th scale model tank Facebook page. And uh, somebody put up a thread where he was having a problem with tiny, small photo etch parts, applying them, gluing them, picking them up, handling them, and what have you. And there was a lot of good ideas and stuff. And um, I put some of my ideas up there that I normally use and uh, before I had a photo etch bender and what have you I used to bend my parts using a certain method and when I when I started to write about it people were enthusiastic about it and they were like wow that's great this is a great discussion and what have you and so it is at that point where I, I started telling them you know when you're handling tiny little small photo etch parts do not attempt to pick them up with the, the greatest of uh, tweezers because one wrong squeeze and as we all know pop they pop off into the twilight zone and you never see them again because hard steel with slippery steel will never ever 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 guarantee you a good <laughs> handhold and so what I normally do is I'll take a toothpick and dip it on my tongue or dip it in water and the, the wet the wooden toothpick gets wet and for some reason it it uh, creates a, a firm but light adhesive quality and you just tap the small little part and it sticks to it and then you apply the, I use um, Zappa Gappa, whatever type of crazy glue you're using, you apply it to the vehicle or to the other part and then you proceed to tap it with the toothpick and then the glue is stronger than your saliva so it grips the part. And uh, you'll see in this video and I've shown you in some other videos. This video is going to consist of a, a Aber set. There's a lot of uh, people that make uh, photo edge sets and uh, Aber are certainly one of the more complicated because uh, they like to give you a lot of detail I mean an extraordinary amount of detail and uh, hinges and what have you actually work in Aber sets which <clears throat> for my part is um, the model is a static model it's like workable tracks you know the only good thing for workable tracks is to slip them through and then glue them because I'm not gonna be pushing my tank anywhere it's going to be stuck to a base and a diorama 
Uh, people like workable tracks. I don't know why they want to play in the sandbox with their tank. I don't know. But a model should be built and then never touched again. It sits on a base or sits somewhere. And um, it is meant to be observed, watched for detail. And that's it. I mean, if you want to play by yourself an RC toy, that's my motto anyway. A lot of you won't agree, but that's what I believe in. Anyway, so, you know, the, uh, the working hinges are nothing to me so i normally just glue everything and the thing about it is that when you buy a new edward set you'll see if you have hinges it's a one piece deal no matter how many angles there is edward did their homework and it's awesome because i'm working on my uh, academy tiger and all the hinges there are excellent beautifully uh, rendered but they're a one piece thing so then you never have to the handles themselves they already have the little ink the little creases in them to bend and what have you and they're already stuck to the part so therefore you do not have to you do not have to uh create the latch the base and the handle as i'm going to be doing here with this abra kit as you can see abra is not for the faint of heart abra is not for the squeamish you have to have a lot of patience they do give you great detail um the thing about abra also is that they coat their photo edge or their brass is like super buttery slippery so that is why I chose that to work with so you can see how the toothpick works and how the third hand works and all of that stuff and I you'll understand what I'm talking about when the third hand nevertheless uh, I want to give a shout out to the people at the modeling world war II page to Mia model magazine page our own page the IPMS Sacramento page welcome all the new members I hope our things are helping you everybody post up there the Panzer page Steve Jawalski's a World War II Wehrmacht page. Uh, my my friends up in the in the Great Northern Europe, the Scandinavian model page, uh, 135th scale model tank page, uh, the 148th scale aircraft page. You know, I don't want to forget anybody because then I they, they think I don't like care or whatever. No, I, I I love all the pages. I love all of the camaraderie on the pages. I love the the back and forth. The scale armory and hangar is another great page military model group is another great page that i belong to i want to give a shout out to all of you guys uh the video is going to be a very short video compared to some of my other videos but it is very informative and you'll see that you can create great photo edge pieces without a bender naturally we want you to get a bender because it makes your life a lot easier but we know that benders go between 40 to some of them a hundred dollars and that's a lot of money to fork out for a tool i think i have a bender um I've gotten it over the years and uh, I stopped. Sometimes I will go to the homemade folding method though, don't get me wrong. Um, the, the bender can't accommodate a certain width of piece and so you'll see. <clears throat> I chose the hardest part on the Abra set so that you can see that it can be done without a photo edge bender. It just takes some time. Here's the video. I hope you enjoy it. We'll catch you at the end. Panzer Kiel out. Okay, as the video states, today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to fold photo edge without the help of a photo edge bender. Now, I myself possess a photo edge bender, a couple of them. My favorite is the this one here from the smallshop.com because it's so compact and you can pick it up and work on it and all of that stuff. But I got the bigger ones too for the bigger parts. But this one pretty much will... Uh, fold any part it has a large area here for larger parts smaller parts and so forth and so forth and it's also positionable you can position it by loosening the, the and turning loosening the knob and turning to the desired spot size however you want what have you see <clears throat> and uh, they're pretty good and they're come in handy but before I had this I used to be, I used to fold my photo edge by by actually um, <laughs> uh, invention and uh, not by design but by by things that I would design to be able to help me fold it because you can fold it without this and I'm gonna show you today how we're gonna make a couple of parts the first part we're gonna make is going to be very complicated but I want to do it so I can show you that it is possible without a photo edge bender to make these little intricate parts and uh, what it is is the first part we're going to be making is 
a latch right here. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. Here it is. That latch right there is actually three separate pieces. It is very tiny. Uh, it requires wire. As you can see, I'm holding it from the wire, which locks it through the holes in the photo etch, just like the real latch. Um, it's glued, actually. I'm not going to be having a workable latch. I don't need it, but it would work if I wanted to, and I didn't want to glue the wire through. Just lay, leave it loose, and the latch will work, but it, it makes no sense because the real hatch on the vehicle, you can see over there, does not really open, but these latches here I have to make four actually three one of them is for the cleaning rod the, the cleaning rod tube and uh, the cleaning rods go in there for the 88 millimeter gun on my Italeri elephant here and I've uh, been working on this Italeri elephant since 2008 it was started in 2008 uh, Zimmer it was done by me by hand. I don't like aftermarket photo etch or resin Zimmer it as you're gonna get a lot of vehicles that look the same. Zimmer it was applied by hand and therefore I like to add the human factor to it. I do all my own Zimmer it and um, this one's almost ready for paint. I just gotta finish the latches. That latch that you saw there is gonna be here. This is the toolbox of the elephant and one here, one here and one here so I'll be making three not tonight tonight I'm gonna make one only and then I'm gonna fold a couple of other parts to show you it's not really that hard to do without a photo edge bender um, now for the longer parts maybe it is a little hard like these parts here the long ring gutters here um, I did fold those with a with a with a bender but it's possible to fold them without the bender and what you want to do is that's where your your f uh, flat duck bill clamps come into place because you can hold it and bend it bend it bend it and then you put it on a flat surface and with the flat part you just run it along the edge and it flattens everything out it leaves it fair enough not as crisp as the real photo etch fender but it works just the same the fenders were applied and I've got to put rod here just a wire and then bend these so that they look like hinges that's coming up it won't be in this video I'm gonna show you just the simple things how to do them and then uh, we're gonna move on I'm gonna try to make it as quick as possible now a while back on one of the pages I believe it was the 135th scale model tank page on Facebook there was a guy who was really pissed off <laughs> at these small intricate parts now if you've ever built with photo etch and uh, you're new to it Aber is not the way for you to go Aber sets are beautiful, they are excellent, but they come with a gazillion parts because they really like to get into the detail, like that latch right there. If it was an Edward kit, that latch would be one piece, believe it or not. You would bend it all in one piece, and it would look something like that. But Aber, uh, being from Poland and being... Not that it's being from Poland, but I mean, they, they, they like to go a step further and give you the true detail of the part. So the part is a working part, so that's why it is in three pieces. And the pieces that we are going to be using today are... The, this is the handle here. There we go. This is the handle here. This is the base and this is the latch here one of each I have to fold this base into a U channel which is actually a squared off U and that's the first part that we're going to show you how to do now to make your life easier you should have thick 
needle nose serrated tip serrated tip tweezers these really help with wires and stuff to pick them up because they have little channels so the, the wire falls into the channel and it picks it up pretty good there you can see it right there <clears throat> and we got into the discussion uh, that when you get to a uh, very small parts like this metal on metal no matter how hard you squeeze will pop, pop them off so you need something like a third hand now these are the flat duck bill tweezers that I use these are for decals and also for bending small photo edge parts <laughs> and last and certainly not least these are a set of really good made in Pakistan micrometer tweezers. I mean the tips are so tiny and sharp that these are not good for wires as wires are round but these are good for small tiny parts that have thickness to them and what have you. Those are the ones that mainly we're going to be using. The most important part in a non-photo edge bending, photo edge bending, is your third hand. Get a piece of card, it could be a business card, it could be anything, put some masking tape on it. This acts as a third hand. And this is where you're going to be doing most of your bending. And so we will get into it right away. What you do is you are going to put your part right there. The U channel is the one that's going to be made first and then it's going to remain it's going to remain stuck to the card and every all the work will all the work will coincide onto the U channel you take your exacto knife and you proceed to cut the channel will cut first now this guy here is stuck to this guy here. Okay. Put your finger over it so that it doesn't pop away. There he is. Press down to make him flat if you don't have anything else. If you have your duckbill, this is where your duckbill tweezers come in. Press down hard and that flattens it up. Beautiful. It's flat. Now as we do not want it to pop up into the twilight zone, do not attempt to pick it up with any kind of tweezers because Aber's photo edge especially is very slippery. Whatever coating they use is very super duper slippery. So you go to the wet toothpick technique that I've shown over and over in my other videos. Put it on your tongue, wet it up, press the middle, and there you go picks it up every time just like clockwork it's not gonna you can't hang a ton of bricks on it but it's solid enough to where it's not gonna fall and it will let you precisely put it on your third hand you come to your third hand and put it all the way to the edge making sure that it's on the tape but on the edge and press down on it now we have our third hand holding the part the parts not gonna go anywhere make sure that it's uh, nice and tight and now you have your photo edge holder what you're going to do your blade the back is flat it's a flat blade of any exacto knife or you can use another blade hold the middle down and then proceed to bend the sides that's what we're going to do here I like to use this because you can stand off at, an, at a see you can stand off pretty far press down put your blade under the side that's going to fold and put 
proceed to fold. We've now folded our first piece. You see that? Can you see that? Is the camera picking it up? There you go. We've now folded our first angle. Very easy, see? The third hand is holding the part. There is no danger of the part flying off into the twilight zone. And we have proceeded to fold this part up where the wire is going to go through. This is the body of the hinge right here. And the wire is going to go through here and hold the, the latch that hooks and then the handle to tighten it. That's all going to go through here. So now we're going to fold the other side. Same way. It's very easy. You put your blade here, slide your blade gently under the other part. Once in a while, just click up so it could grab. And here it goes. We grab already. And now you proceed to bend up. And now we've made our U channel without a photo edge holder. There's our U. Can you see it? Yeah, the camera's picking it up. I can see. There you go. U channel right there, me. That is the body of the part. Check to see that it's more or less square. If it needs a little bit, not don't overdo it. But if it needs a little bit, if it's not perfectly square, and they're not all going to be perfectly square. There is no right or wrong. Just get it to the ballpark. You can take your tweezers here. Take the serrated ones and just squeeze gently and now it's almost perfect. If it goes too much, sorry, <laughs> I just knocked you guys. So, here we go. If it goes too much, which this one did, get your holder again hold down it just went a little too much so I'm gonna go back a little bit put your blade in and there you go that's how you adjust now we're just about perfect I'm happy with it so now we're going to proceed this is gonna be a harder part but I'm doing it so that I can so to show you that you can do it without a photo extender this is the handle for the latch and this is the latch now when we fold this this latch here this latch here has to end up in this hole here it's like a three ring circus act that you have to do all at once you can proceed to glue a little bit maybe use white glue or what have you I normally just bend a little, put the latch in there, and then finish bending, which I will show you. But you can put white glue to hold the latch in place in the handle, and uh, proceed to bend it, and then you place it over here, and you put your wire through, and that should do it. So we're going to cut both of our parts out right now, because both of those have to go in unison at the same time. That is why I say Aber kits are not for everybody because they are a little more complicated but Edward said would have had this latch in one piece you wouldn't have to worry about anything just bend it at the angles that are already pre-cut and uh, everything would have been fine but Aber gives you a little bit more detail and a little bit more work to do and I don't complain I like the detail and I like the, the style of their other uh, sets and uh, pretty much they give you uh, parts to do all of the parts there's just a lot and now what we're gonna do here we're gonna cut our latch right here let's cut and we'll cut our latch there now the latch got a little bent do not panic again use your duck bill if you don't have duck bill the bottom of your exacto knife is flat you can flatten it out there it is it's perfectly flat now there's different ways to do it don't panic i'm gonna 
I'll just give it one more going over. Now we proceed to bring it onto the hard working surface of the card. There it is. And now we're going to cut our handle out of the tree here. There is no right or wrong to doing things. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And I like when people say, no, this is the way it has to be done. No, it does not as long as you get the desired result. flat treatment. Okay. Normally in the Edward Photo Edge sets, the handle here would have some serrations to demarcate the bending angle and to and to aid in the bending angle to facilitate it. Unfortunately, Aber has not done that, so it's up to you to get the angle. How can I tell you? Um, to get it equal. It is, so that's why I'm saying this is for more experienced modelers, so you have to try and get it equal to be able to uh, have it even on both ends. Now, the The whole shebang should be done with the serrated. It should be done with the serrated nail nose. And what you want to do is place it. There we go. Place it more or less in the middle. Bring the clamp down. Oops. Oh wow, I already bent. It's okay, never panic. I did a bend on it already. But the, this is why these come in so handy. You're gonna be a good a bend going. You'll be fine. So what you wanna do is grab it and then adjust it up here. Once you've grabbed it, since they're flat, you can grip it tight. And you can pretty much see, you can pretty much see by pulling it and adjusting it up here where the middle is. This is where these come in handy. Beautiful. Sure, they're straight and just proceed to bend. Proceed to bend. And now we've bent. Drop. Now they're a little open, as you can see. And uh, you can do several adjustments. The good thing is that they're on our hard cardboard here. This guy's still alive. <laughs> Okay, so what you want to do if it's crooked because this one's crooked just press down on it gently and that will even both sides out Now I'm looking at it and it does not look okay. There we go it looks like one side got bent more than the other, but that's okay because, and these are great, the serration ones are great because it doesn't let it pop out. What you're going to do is you're going to push it right up. 
and let it even itself which let me show okay. hold the one side and push down on the side it's not even you can see the holes start lining up I know you can't see it on camera but you'll be able to see the holes there it is line up once it's even what you're gonna want to do is side by side grab this side and make sure that this side is straight there we go it's straight now grab this side and make sure that it's straight even out there we go now we're even so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this guy here on our tape so that it doesn't move all over the place our third hand now all parts are gonna be different guys they're not gonna be the same so you have to be you have to use innovation you have to use your your head I put this here so that it doesn't pop out I'm gonna put this latch into the handle and then I'm going to close it and and put a, a drop of a, a super glue now what we want to do we're going to use our whip toothpick technique To grab the part from this side, there we go. Bring it over. You have to dip it. And you have to dip it. you'll see when it starts going in and what you really want to do this is what we're going to do we're going to put glue on it already I should have put the glue first it's okay don't worry about it there's never a problem nothing's ever a problem there is no right or wrong and the way we're going to put our glue we're going to take another toothpick put a little tiny drop on it I'm gonna see if I can pick it up with the serrated needle nose, but um, you can do it with the toothpick too. It's just a little more work. <clears throat> but you can get these serrated needle nose uh, tweezers at any uh, hobby or art shop. And we're gonna put a little bit of glue. There we go. And now. See how nice they pick it up? And now we're going to proceed to put our... Okay, we're in. It moved, I know it moved, it's okay. And we pick it up. beautiful now make sure that we are nice and glued and now we proceed to move our latch with our toothpick mm, he's trying to fall okay it's okay never panic the the good thing is that the glue doesn't dry right away
Okay. Uh-uh. Push your part. There we go. Beautiful. Now, the glue is starting to sit, but it's still workable. You can see the part there. Now we're going to close it. Bingo. We got it. Oh yeah, we did it, but it's okay. We're gonna glue the other side. I never panic, we're good, we're really good. Beautiful, we're in. So now what we're gonna do, even though it got smashed, don't worry about it. I'm gonna show you how to fix it. We're going to pick it up. Okay. Pick it up with this. Tape it to the base, like so. proceed to glue the other side once you glue the other side you can reshape the little hook no big deal oh, you can still see but we're proceeding to glue the other side beautiful beautiful Now what you want to do is don't just leave it chilling right there. Stand it up so that it doesn't touch the glue that's on your little cart there. This is beautiful. Close up the gap. This is where these come in handy because they're more precise, they're more small. And just hold it, slide off, beautiful. It'll sit in about five minutes. And if you want to re 
Well, not re-glue it, but I mean reinforce it. Add a little more glue right now so that it's nice and super solid. Put the tip of your thing just Beautiful. Now we're going to let that set for about five minutes. In the meantime, we're going to do some other parts. And it's basically the, the same way, very easy. This thing works for several parts, several angles. This is one of the hardest parts to make, so I, I wanted to do this on camera so that you could see that it's possible. And uh, the finished product will look like this. This is what the finished product's going to look like. I did this the same way. And uh, with that plastic stock card. And this would be the second uh, latch on that thing. And then the third one here. We're almost ready for paint on this elephant. I can't wait. I've been waiting forever to do it. And um, we're finally getting to the end here. It's going to be three tone camera. <clears throat> Unit in Italy. And the bigger parts are even easier, guys. I mean, it doesn't get in, it does not get any easier than this. It just does not. I mean, it, there, there's no way you can mess up, there's no way anything. The, the, little, the, the little holder is great. And so now, what we're going to do is, we're going to fold the bigger part so you can see how the bigger parts get folded. Very easy, guys. Very, very easy. While that's setting, we're going to do a bigger part. Now, pick it up with your wet toothpick technique, put it flat, flatten it out so that all the sides are flat, with your flat tweezers, you just flat, put it on your third hand, here we're on our third hand here now proceed to get your clamp put your clamp down to hold it with pressure like so as close to that demarcation line as you possibly can get get your bender which is a blade make sure that you are at the demarcation line right there. put your bender under start prying up make sure that it's equal push up and we've made our first bend on our big part you see that two blades that's all it takes guys now get your serrated needle nose grab the part pull up gently because the tape is really strong and uh, make sure that the tape is nice and flat 
Now you have something where to grab it from. Grab the card, trim it, put the demarcation line right outside of the tape. As you can see right here. Beautiful. What? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Really beautiful. Right. Uh-huh. Okay. Now put your clamp down. Whatever you're using. You could use wood, you could use a toothpick, but I use the blade because the blade is super strong. Get your bender. Put your bender under. And we have just made a part. Perfect bends with no photo etch bend. There's the part. And don't you just love the third hand? Third hand will not fail you. Third hand holds your parts. Here's the U channel that this latch will go onto, and then the wire will go right through it. I'm letting the glue sit in there, but we've completed this part here. Now, if these don't fit and you don't want to distort it, get your precise needle nose, put it through the little hole, there's a little hole there, proceed to pull. Beautiful. So with a little innovation, you can do the whole shebang and you don't need, you don't need a photo edge bender. Now, I'm going to do pretty much everything's pretty much been done. I'm, I'm almost ready for paint. I, I'm not going to use any of these. I mean, I, they, it, it called to change, but I'm going to use the ones in the kit. I compared them, and there's not that much more of a difference. The, the detail isn't that much more for the amount of work it's going to take to cut and replace and all of that stuff so I'm going with these and stuff but yeah there you have it there you have it I'm gonna make a bigger part now so that you can see I'm gonna make these metal parts that go on top of here I'm gonna make one of them so you can see that it is very possible to work with these parts without a photo etch bender. This part here for the wood was made the same way. Okay. Now we're going to cut our part always work on paper so that the paper actually is also works as a cushion so that when you cut the part it doesn't bounce off into the twilight zone. Hard metal on hard metal on a hard piece of wood and the, the part's going to go flying off somewhere. The paper acts as a cushion. I always work on the top of the paper. Put your finger on top of it. Proceed to press down. Put your finger on top of it. Proceed to press down. That part is off. Now the bigger parts I like because you can actually hold them with your hand and uh, sometimes let me see uh, this one cut pretty good sometimes there'll be little uh, excess and you have to file it off make sure that it's flat and uh, now we get our toothpick because it's faster pick up the part put it down as close to the demarcation line as possible and uh, beautiful Press down to make sure that it's nice and 
stuck on there. So you get your clamp again. Press down, making sure it's nice and tight and as even with the demarcation line as you can possibly get. That's going to be very important. Use your bender to get underneath and proceed. Start bending it. And there you have it. Again, we made a bend using no whatsoever, no uh, photo etch bender to get our part done. So we proceed to grab it with our serrated, put it down nice and flat, beautiful 90 degree angle, which is what we wanted. So now, just going here, you put in the box so that he doesn't um, get lost. Okay, now we can go back and get our handle here, set him down so we can shape him. Okay, make sure that. Your clamp you're working on is exactly at the angle you want. Bring it over. Turn it to ease of you what you want to work with. Let's close it up a little bit. <laughs> close it up just a little bit. That is why I tell you that Abra is hard. Abra is not for a thing of heart. But it is possible to work ever. It's lifting up here, and that's not what we want. We want it nice and stuck. Okay, that's what I want. Turn it. Excellent. Press. Excellent. Make sure that it's nice and stuck on there. Um, let's see if we can get this thing going. It's you would probably, and don't worry. Even if you had a photo edge bender, you would still have this deal going on like this because this needs to open up a little more. Looks like we're in. Now we're gonna have to pull it to the desired position. We're just about there. You gotta line up the hole so that it goes all the way through when you insert your wire once you get the wire in it's all gravy from there
beautiful. Now I gotta find the other side. Do not pull it out, guys. No matter what happens, do not let it pull out. Gotta come up. Work to the one, but not two. Okay. So, yeah, I like I said, this is one of the hardest parts. The detail is excellent, though. Once you get into it. You gotta like play it around so that it can go through. It's right there. We're in one. We're in one side, but it's like it does not want to go to the other side. It's a lot of trial and error, guys. I'm in one side. Gotta be very careful because... careful because we're in one side already but he just does not want to go This does not want to go. I can't locate the tiny little hole on the other side. Do 
beautiful. <laughs> the way things work out. We're in. It took a little finagling, but we're in. And now, what you want to do is... You want to glue that guy so that it doesn't come out. We're in. <laughs> it took a little finagling, sorry, but we're in. And that's why I'm telling you, this is the hardest part to make on the Abber. The Edward is one piece and you don't have to deal with all of that stuff. I know some of you are going to say, oh goodness, I'll never try that. Yeah, maybe not right now. Later on when you get your skill higher, you can do it, but not for the squeamish right now. No. sure it gets you everywhere so that it glues and that is exactly what we want guys exactly we used our wire and we inserted it and threaded it through and uh, Get your little scissors. The wire cuts excellent with the little scissors. And there you have it. Our part made with our wire. No photo etch bender. A very complicated part, but we got it done. I hope this has helped you. I showed you how to do it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Rate, comment. And I'll see you on the next one. Panzer Keel out. Okay, that was the video. I hope you had a great time. I hope you, uh, we were able to help you uh, here on my page. I hope that you uh, aren't intimidated by PhotoEdge. PhotoEdge adds a great deal of detail to either aircraft, anything actually. 
That's why it was developed, to add detail. And to be honest with you, the Edward sets are easier to work with than most of the other sets that I've seen. If you're an experienced modeler, naturally, the other sets are going to give you a lot more detail. But the Edward sets are adequate enough, they're priced right, and they're easy to work with, which is what I recommend for any beginner using a photo edge. And uh, you saw some of the you saw some of the examples of photo edge and how it works and stuff in the pictures in the video. Again, I hope you have a good time with modeling. Great shout out to all the Facebook modeling pages. Comment, PM me if you need any help. Get 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 with me on Facebook. Be sure to visit our page, IPMS Sacramento Facebook page, and join. And we'll see you on the next video. Panzer Kiel out. Happy modeling.